Good morning, guys. Um, spraying cotton again today. See the gauge right here at 850 service. Okay, that anytime you see that right there, it's just a code or an alarm. Click it. The home button gets you back to here. You've got four home screens. This is two of four. That's the one I normally run with. All right. So first off, you're going to set. Hit this button. Go to your sprayer going to re refill your tank. I just refilled it a while ago. All you do, click that, refill options at 850. You can reset either one of those presets. Click that, it goes back up to 850. We're good. That makes sure uh, what your, that all your sections are on of the boom. Right, one, two, three, left, one, two, three, and center. That's the other rates right here that you can control on one, two, three rates. You also have manual PSI and not exactly sure what the others are, but so go back to the home screen and we're on 14 gallons an acre as you've seen on preset three right here. Um, I've still got a line set right now. You, normally going down the road just to be sure you don't activate the auto steer button which is right here. I normally set a line set me later and also it keeps it from beeping as you're going down the road. You can go through and turn the uh, guidance off completely but <clears throat> no need. The, uh, the ladder comes down automatically but that button right there will let it down as well. So, here we go, time to fill up. I'm gonna grab my hose off the wagon, pull it to the back, make sure it reaches. Make sure it reaches right here. Get my adapter out. This up to the adapter, open the valve with sprayer, open the valve here. The wagon's supposed to be full, got water in it. On switch on, choke just a little. water. So, they do open the mixing back and stick our 
chemicals in. Double rinse on the Put the lid back on. And wait and make sure it doesn't overflow. All right, we're already at 700. I believe that's right. Yep. Ah, a little bit of overflow, no big deal. Cut this off. This. Oh. Hang it back up. We're ready to go again.
sweating a little. Need to, uh, get the fan down just a tad. There's Doug. What about a Doug? Okay. Really, the only thing to do now, we've got the tank filled, pump is off. Turn the flashers on, the strobe on, so everyone sees us, and we throttle up right here. We throttle up slowly or go straight to 2400. I usually uh, go up to about 16, 1800, put it in forward, push the hydrostat forward. The uh, ladder will come up on its own. And we're ready for the road. All right, real quick, I'm gonna pull in here at the little country store, get some coffee, maybe a biscuit. But um, I actually just learned this the other day. Um, of course, our chemicals mixed up really good right now. But this button right here is a tank agitation. It'll come on when you push it here. It pops up right there. I didn't know this, my, uh, my buddy Joe, uh, I asked him what it was. It's actually got one on the outside too. We were filling up, uh, the pump was messed up on the water wagon. Of course, this is the regular solution pump. You turn it on, it'll come on as well, but really not 100% sure. I think it's just a lighter pump and it doesn't put pressure on all the hoses. It just agitates the tank. At a, not as much pressure at all. So, maybe no pressure. Just uh, circulates the water. So, while I'm sitting here stopped, it probably won't uh, settle anyway, but just to keep uh, chemicals from settling, uh, while I'm sitting here for three or four minutes, still going down, going down the road would probably keep them agitated and uh, mixed up properly, but yeah. Shout out, Joe. All right, we made it. Just gonna downshift a little bit. Pull the hydrostat back. pick out where I want to start. And now I know uh, probably the main thing that uh, is not kept up with anywhere on uh, on the display or the screen just should probably keep some type of log. Uh, but to keep up with what is in your solution tank from the day before. Because say you get rained out, you're spraying soybeans, you're gonna spray corn or cotton next, vice versa, whatever. Say you're not spraying herbicide, you're just spraying pesticide, you're spraying picks, um, and you have this random like 230 or 470 or something on, on the tank, you're like, what, what was that? You got to remember what mixture was in prior the previous spray. So, small rant, not a big deal. I'm guilty of it. I forgot completely what was in the thing and kind of had to just backtrack and hope for the best sometimes. But saying all that, I had 228 gallons before I reset the tank to 850 of just Roundup and water that I was putting on soybeans to clean the grass and morning glories up in. We're putting pigs and plant bug spray all right, folding the boom out. First off, you want to take both of them up out of the little racks. You have to be going less than six miles per hour. If you're going 2.1, you have to have clearance all around. Hold your foot on that foot peg. 
a little bit of pressure and you're unfolding. They give you a little folding notification, caution, folding, unfolding, excuse me. Both, uh, you don't have to be able to do this. I'm just heading to my destination. But both booms spread out and go into position. To do that, all I did was hold down these two right here. That's each individual. Like that. So, very simple there. But no, right here I know I've got Roundup only. So what I'm going to do, pump is on, correct? No, pump is not on. on now. Alright, let it build up pressure. 40. Turn it on here. This little button. Okay. Yeah. Resetting field. Section control disabled. Didn't go through that. Turn the pump back off. Idle engine back down. Okay. So now back to menu. Go to Green Star. It's probably going to be grayed out because I did the all right, set track zero. You can't be in the process like before I left the shop of setting an AB line. Um, I canceled that one out. Alright, now I've got an AB line set. I'm going to go back to menu. GS3 Green Star. I want guidance. Yes. I want section control. Yes. Accept. Alright, I was in what we call a Coon Creek field farm. I'm going to change my farm from Oxford to Randolph. then choose a field. The field, the Onsby field is not in here, so I'm going to go new. Kind of hard to type looking through the phone, but accept. And you just gotta go through that setup. That stays the same. It's got nine pages, just checks everything, boundary, width, all that. Accept, back to the home screen, and we're ready to go. We spray two gallons out right here. I'm gonna turn the pump back on right there. Watch the pressure build up to 40. And idle the motor back up. Turn the sprayer back on and spray it. And I'm going to say anywhere from about 10 to 20 gallons should get it old chemical out of your bag for the most part. So I'm down to 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm just spraying grass right here, hanging over the cotton a little bit, but, uh, all right, we're down to about 10 gallons sprayed out, so we'll go, to, go around the perimeters of these fields and kind of clean up the edges. You see they're pretty grown up, pretty grassy. The automatic uh, pressure is pretty nice with the 14 automatic rate. Oh, almost forgot. You gotta widen your wheels out. Turn the spray off right there. That keeps the pump on, keeps the pressure built. But uh, I haven't ran over any rows yet. 
going up and down the roads. I was just easing around that turn road. But uh, then again, less than five, six miles per hour. This is the wheel narrow button. This is the wheel spread button. You do have to be rolling to do this. When I, I'm gonna, my wheels are as narrow as they are for road transport right now. I'm going to hold this down, treading. It's on the 152 preset, which straddles four 38 inch rows. When they all get to 76, 152, center to center, which they are at, I'll be ready to spray again. Push the home screen, turn the spray back on here on the hydrostat button. That little button lights up, and we're back at it. We watch this map, not, uh, See, no way B lines to find. Most of the time, spraying cotton, I do not uh, even set a line. Uh, just follow the rows because there's different planter uh, swaths might accidentally skip. We ran three different planters. It's hard for everybody to hold it perfect, be on the exact same line. Uh, so, it, and it's pretty easy. Robert M. Ray right there. Do a little equipment hauling. It's our neighbor. 100% dry land farmer. Yeah, I just try to keep uh, keep the tires in the middles right here. Keep that uh, little silver thing up front. In the middle. Which it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know. Cleaning up the edges. And you're going to run over some cotton on the turn rows. That's uh, one of the faults of planting a turn row. As you can see, it's not up on a bed. A little water stressed, a lot of water stressed, but a lot of cotton, a lot of land left out if you don't plant the turn rows. So, <clears throat> and a lot of times I just pick out a four set, straddle them tires over in the middle. Make sure the boom reaches the outside to where I want to spray. And yes, it is extremely bumpy sometimes going around these turn rows like this with the boom spread out. A long time ago they used to spray with the old 6000s and the 6700s, 6500s. I'm just to make sure they spray with just tractors before that. But they would ride out there, fold one boom up, and I'd done that a lot with the 46.30s uh, because they didn't have front airbags. And boy, I'm talking about chronic back pain, which I ran a 6700 a lot too. And uh, whew, yeah, but anyway, these are much nicer, the airbags. And it gives you a lot more room to turn around. You have a 90 foot uh, swath to turn around in at the end of every end row. I'm going to hang this up over the hedge right there to sort of keep it under control. Don't want to do this too often because the, uh, especially on a highly erodible soil, which this is not by any means. I'm in a pretty heavy dirt, pretty sticky type dirt right in here. It gets sandier as you get back up to higher ground yeah right now I'm just trying to run over as little of cotton as possible keep the boom out of the bushes and uh, just spraying perimeters spraying edges somebody's got a nice bush hog pad right there really grassy right here Okay, made it back to where we started. <clears throat> About to start our first set of rows, and like I said, I normally uh, do not set an AB line uh, when spraying cotton. Now my screen's dusty. Where I 
wanted to be anyway. <laughs> no, go back. It really was. So anyway, set track zero. You name your track. doing right here you want to be sure you have at least that good a signal which that that's pretty good for spraying it could be better but it's good enough um we're gonna set a set b later because you want to be able to see this screen to make sure your boom is painted blue um what we're gonna do we're gonna stay on these four rows and go all the way to the other end driving and then we're going to set B. Then that will give us a 90 foot swath from that ditch all the way over to that road where we've seen Robbie. The other Robbie. Robbie, Robbie Ray. Uh, so yeah. Lights on, pumps on, pressure's up. We have 619 in the tank. We have about a 65 acre field to spray, so we will never get done. We'll, what we'll do is we'll go, these are the longest rows. That's number one, number one. Start, unless you have a square field, start in the longest rows. That way you will go back this way and turn back short. We'll go back that way and turn back short on that ditch. Same way with this one. It doesn't always work out. Sometimes you have to turn the long rows, but nine times out of 10, you can, if you'll start in the longest rows, you have the easiest turn pattern for that specific field. So, rev the engine back up, stay in the four rows, and we're going the other end. Spray it. This whole time it is tracking our, I guess the entire, the entire time this uh, vehicle is running, uh, the GPS being tracked, but right now we're specifically tracking it for this AB line, straight line, that we're setting for auto steer. Um, when we get far enough down, which I'm going to go pretty much to the other end uh, and set the and it will yes I'm spraying now I'm not just driving the other end just to, just to set the line sometimes we do that hippie uh, just so the first set of 12 or first swath will be straight but we're almost there and uh, we'll get back with you then okay we're almost the other end we need to reach down, set B. That'll give us a line, shows up. And yeah, we're already off of it. That's exactly why I don't uh, do this. I don't know how, only three inches. But uh, no, to, we have to turn our steering on on this specific thing. So we hit the home screen three times. Get steering on with that steering wheel right there. That turned the steering on. Then we hit this button. Bam. Steering took over. Uh, kind of bumpy. Bear with me. And Theoretically speaking, you should not, if all your rows match up perfect, which is hard, running 
12 row planters with a 28 row boom, whatever, 90, 90 foot. Uh, when I get back to here, what I should be able to do is hit this button right here, number two. It's right on the hydrostat right here where my hand is anyway. I hit it. When you hear that, bloop. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it back out. All right, that sound, steering wheel move, canceled it. All right, I'm gonna move back forward. Hit number two, that sound activated it. All right, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be more than likely just a little bit off right here. This is really muddy. It's not like we're gonna kill any cotton right over anything right here. Um, it says I'm still nine inches off. I'm down in the bed. Oh, yeah. That's why I drive. There's always something uh, in the way. Now, discing, planting, everything's dry. By all means, see, it, it left a little gap right there. Uh, all right, we're close. Um, 15 inches. All right, that right there, that little overlap might be seven inches maybe, less than that. Uh, so that's not really enough to worry about. If you really wanted to use auto steer, what you can do is that little button right here at the top by my numbers. I would click it, it would zero me in right here. Then I would hit, hit my auto. And I would auto steer where I wanted to go. That's what I do a lot when I think the rows are straight enough to follow. But it's almost just not worth it. Uh, it's just, so you're still having to find your row. And it sounds crazy, but I use the map to find my row. I don't count the rows. Because um, I mean, 28 rows is just too much to count, or whatever's 14, or whatever's halfway, you count 12. 12 rows is a lot to count, especially when you, you're able to turn it right now. Let's see. I'm spraying at 13, 14 miles per hour. Uh, you're not turning quite that fast, but uh, close. You got enough things to watch. Uh, it, it, like I said, it works, but I prefer to manually steer 99% of the time driver cotton. And I would do it here just for the sake of the video. I showed you how it could be done. But you, like I said, I haven't touched the wheel the entire time. Um, spray it. I, mean, I touched the wheel while I was turning, but uh, just to get my, get my tires in the middles and almost the other end. All right, this is me manually turning back into the other end. I had to straddle the rows um, 12 inches off and that just comes with the error and the spacing of the boom and the, the planters, hippers, rows that are priorly, or already made. Uh, so what I'm going to do, if I wanted to auto steer, I'm just hit the center button. Center it back up, go the other end, Engage auto steer here on the hydrostat and go. What I'm going to do, the way I normally spray, set track zero, set A, set B later, and then I never set B later. That way you don't have any, no A, B lines, codes on your screen. You have an open screen. You can zoom in some if you need to with these buttons. You can zoom out. I use the pan out a lot. To uh, make sure I haven't skipped a place before leaving a particular farm. So, I'm about to hold the steering wheel right here without auto steer and go to the other end. It's gonna work great. All I have to do is push that, spray turns on, feels painted like blue, and don't let the boom get into the ground. You don't let the rubbers get into the cotton. Make sure the pressure stays up. 
We're rocking. Easy, anyone can do it, or I can do it, so anyone can do it, for sure. 